An unpredictable life is a wonderful thing. Cases may come flooding in like passengers at rush hour. Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Deadly Premonition. Last time, we were trying to get to the A&G Diner as we were waiting for Quint to get back home. But we never made it because we were sidetracked. Uh, but we're here, uh, we're here now. The A&G Diner was another of the locations that Polly was talking about, and that's their mascot right there. It's a place where we can get food. It's a place where we can talk to people. We might see several other characters uh, coming to the diner for lunch or dinner. So it's a good place to get to know. And we can see a couple of workers in the back, so let's have a chat with them. FBI Special Agent Francis York Morgan. And you are? Olivia. Olivia Cormack. Olivia. Now that's a lovely name. Do you think so? You're the only one who's ever said that other than my father and Nick. Oh, it's a very good name. You should be proud of it. There's that famous singer, too, isn't there? From the 70s? She's actually from England, but she's got this really strong image of being an American pop singer. Huh? That's it. Olivia Newton-John. You know of her, right? She's not only a successful singer, she's successful as an actress, too. Personally, I really liked that movie back in 1980. She played a priest fairy who just looked amazing and stunning. It's hard to believe he was 82 at the time. Um, sorry, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Really? That's a shame. You should watch it when you get a chance. You'll learn to love your name. Oh, okay. So, Olivia, do you know anything about Anna that might be helpful to me? Oh, she was a bright and lovely girl. I can't believe she... Did she ever look worried or anxious? No, not really. I just... I, I can't believe it, really. I'm never going to see her again, am I? She was here with us, so happy and energetic just a few days ago. She and I, we were getting all excited over some new dessert. Thank you, then. If you remember anything else, let me know. Well, she doesn't seem to know too Hi much. So they have a few selections on their menu, but uh, they all do the same thing. They all say it will satisfy a moderate amount of your hunger. So you might as well just uh, buy the cheapest one, which in this case is cornbread. At this point I should uh, explain what the hunger meter does. You see that meter that just went up and it has a knife and a fork next to it? That's the hunger meter. As time goes on, that will decrease. If that reaches zero, then your health will start to go down. So yes, you, uh, Agent York can starve to death, so you do want to eat every so often to keep that meter Hi up. There. Of course, it's not uh, just food at the diner that you can eat. The uh, food items that we've been picking up and we've been carrying around with us can also be used for that. Such as the can of pickles and the lollipops. Working here. You can't just stroll into a chef's kitchen. Then perhaps you would give me your permission to enter. No! Get the hell out of here! Zack, everyone has their own sanctuary. Let's leave him in his. Well, he's not friendly at all. So, that would be Nick back there. We know that because uh, Olivia just told us his name is Nick. 
We can't actually officially introduce ourselves to him because uh, he won't let us into his kitchen. But he can't stay there forever. And sure, the menu has its own card. Why not? If Anna's dressed it, then sure. So you may notice a lot of uh, a lot of people in this diner. They don't have names and a trading card for coffee. Coffee. Yeah, coffee has its own trading card. It is a valuable investigative tool for Agent York. So you may notice all these NPCs with no names. You can't actually interact with them. And they have nothing to do with the case, they don't talk, they don't do anything. They're basically just there for background material. Otherwise this diner would be empty, I guess. But that's uh, all there is for the A&G diner for right now. But that is a location we'll want to keep in mind as we, uh, as we continue the investigation. Now, where to next? Oh, wait, hold on a second. So, uh, when we saw Lily take off in the last video, she was leaving here, the Book Mountain Bank. So let's have a look here to see if she, uh, left anything behind. And actually, she did. Her trading card. For some reason, even though the Book Mountain Bank is a named location on the map, we can't actually go into the building. Lily can, but we cannot. And to our left is the, uh, the Greenvale uh, Sheriff's Department, which is where we're supposed to go and where George is waiting for us, but I think he can wait until tomorrow. A place you might think that could be a good area to find out about Anna would be the Greenvale High School, because her students, a fellow students should know about her, right? But you can actually go in. It's never open, it's always locked, unfortunately. But there is this. Right, so we're racing. We're racing now. We are being a responsible FBI agent by racing on the streets of this small town. The goal of these races is to uh, reach these uh, checkpoints. In a time limit, you can see a bar counting down the time. We have to get to all of the checkpoints and make it back to the high school within that amount of time. Now, whenever you hit a checkpoint, the next one will then appear, and you can see it on the mini-map, which, if we look right now, we can see I'm actually driving away from it. Let's go back. So yeah, when doing one of these races, you do want to keep your eyes on the mini-map, and don't do what I just did, which was, uh, ignore it, because then you might miss these checkpoints. But that's okay, I think we can make up the time. Something to keep in mind is that uh, during these races, the normal Greenvale traffic will still be around. It's not like they vanish. And they will get in your way. There's a little uh, reward for finishing one of these races, and there are three of these races in different locations in Greenvale. Sometimes a new checkpoint will be immediately behind us, so again, that's why you want to check the mini-map and not hit trees. You want to check the mini-map because, uh, it might appear in a place out of your line of sight, such as the next one. Oh, look, wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have been able to see that one without using the map. 
That is not a checkpoint, that green ring right there. That one is where the game wants us to go, which is to the Sheriff's Department. It can be tempting to try to make shortcuts through other people's uh, property. That usually doesn't work out so well. Yeah, that was a car that just rammed us into here. Like I said, the traffic will get in your way. Uh, it's usually not, not a good idea to try to take shortcuts over people's property because usually there will be obstacles getting in your way from actually making it across. Like a fence or a tree or a bush. But here we are back at the high school. Great! We did it. So our reward is on the other side of the high school. And we're just going to drive over there because uh, walking is for chumps. Ah, here we go. There are two rewards for actually uh, beating a race. One is Agent, uh, Agent Honor. So that's 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210. The other reward will be a trading card. Why is Keith's card at a high school? Why is Keith's card at the high school? He's not a high school student, he's an adult. He owns a convenience store. This is really the only uh, reason we have to come to the high school, that race. Like I said, you can't actually go in. Which seems like a shame because this seems like it could have been a, a good location for investigation. Okay, so I think we've, uh, we've done enough screwing around waiting for Quint to get back home. He better be home by now. Right, he better be home by now. Spent enough time at Sally's. So let's head back on over and see if we can get into uh, Quint's, uh, Quint's home and if we can find any evidence that can make uh, perhaps him and Becky talk a little bit more. Now Joel Gray's daughter is, of course. That's right, Jennifer Gray. You know that, right, Zach? Jennifer Gray. She's in one of my most favorite movies. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. 1986, directed by John Hughes. That one was so 80s. Zach, you're not the most cheerful guy I know. But you really do like those cheerful movies. We used to love those teenage movies back then, didn't we? Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink. St. Elmo's Fire. And Fast Times at Ridgemont High. That last one was in 1982, directed by Amy Hecker. Now that was an impressive film. You've got Sean Penn in the lead. With Jennifer Jason Lee and Phoebe Cates. Not to mention Nicolas Cage and Forrest Whitaker were in it, too. And the original book and the script were written by Cameron Crowe. How could that not be a great film? You remember, Zach? When that movie ended, the last words the end was from an arcade game. That's right, it was from Missile Command. It stuck in my head for a while. The memories. I feel like I have a lot of movies to catch up on. Let's just hope we can get to the end of this case soon. Catch up on a few. Give some thought about what movie you want to see next, Zach. I recognize that car. 